All right, Team Jesus, I think I'm live. It's spinning around in a circle. So um, I guess back by popular demand. So we're going to, uh, I'll explain a little bit what we're doing. So we've got this uh, new John, um, first John uh, series coming up. So all that really means is that the lectionary really lines up uh, first John uh, pretty much through, through the whole Easter. So for the next couple of uh, weeks, um, at least through Easter. So I think that amounts to about five or six weeks. I'm going to choose this 430 time spot on Wednesday because this is when we would gather for our midweek services. So I thought, well, uh, let's shoot that 430 time slot and just talk a little bit about um, First John. So I also wanted to kind of incorporate a, a, another thing into uh, the reading of like what we were doing as far as the devotion that was there. Um, and it's called um, Lectio Divina. And you can, of course, Google that. And you're going to get about a, a million different responses on ways you can do that. Um, but what Lectio, if I'm saying it right, even close to Latin, I am not proficient in Latin, uh, Divina, uh, is really it's a holy reading exercise. And so how I came across this, or at least, uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've heard about it or read about it, you know, those types of things numerous times before. Uh, but what really got me involved in this type of uh, reading or at least learning a little bit about it uh, was when I was at a at the seminary and I was taking a pastor as counselor course. And so, of course, uh, for extra credit, when we got those opportunities, I usually took advantage of them because I needed all the help I could get out academically as far as that goes. But it was also a good learning experience. And so during pastor as counselor, um, Dr. Hartung, who was a, a PhD uh, psychiatrist at the seminary at the time, um, and, and gave us a couple different options of what we could do. And one of those options was to actually go um, and be spiritually coached. And so I went to, uh, you know, there's a, a place and I can't remember the name of it, uh, but it's right across the river there in Illinois. Uh, there's a monastery that's there. And so um, of course, there's an ordained priest that would that would teach this, and he was kind of a, a spiritual coach expert, and he's the one that kind of took me through this particular process. Now, like I said, you can you can read a lot of different information about it, and so I I don't encourage you to just you know Google it and and go. If you're really interested in more information on this, I can certainly share this with you. I just wasn't quite sure about how much um, interest there would be in this per se. Um, but it's it really I mean, if I'm going to run it through it, just a real quick nutshell, it's like you read it, you're meditating on it, you're praying it and you're, you know, contemplating and you have a, a series of things that are going on there. And so what I'm going to do is kind of create my own through this particular process. Also, the first thing I was going to talk about is the, in the reading aspect, at least the way I was taught it, is it's just you read something over and over again. And, um, you know, another good insight, I think, on it. Uh, that I found from uh, Pastor Ware, who's an LCMS um, person or LCMS pastor that wrote something for the Texas district actually on this. And so this kind of, you know, gives you it in a, in a nutshell about what this, this means. And so uh, how he described it is this. This is a spiritual reading that has as its chief characteristic an attitude of surrender to the word of God rather than the restless attempt to get something out of the text. Um, so it's kind of an interesting thing because a lot of times this is probably more of a, a guilty thing for pastors because like, you know, when we look at a text, we're like, well, how am I going to preach this? You know, people coming on Sunday, they're going to come to hear God's word. How am I going to preach this text? As opposed to if you're catching this, this slightly, and this is the way I was kind of, you know, taught through this particular process is how is the text reading you individually. And you see, this becomes much more devotional in its approach. Um, so often, you know, people I've heard before talk about, you know, how, how do you approach reading scripture? Uh, we, we've done reading through the Bible before, and I don't know if that sometimes maybe just disappoints people because they can't necessarily, you know, keep up with that. And I'm not knocking read through the Bible because I've, you know, participated that a couple of times um, at Steve, St. Stephen and, and nothing, you know, anytime you're spending in God's word is not going to hurt you. Right. Um, but it's just a little bit different in the sense of, you know, how much you're actually tackling it at one time. So I remember when I started that process, um, we just worked through Psalm 139 and I've suggested this to other people too, to just work through it real slowly. And, um, you know, I remember him leaving. I think we would meet about once every three weeks or something along the lines of that. And, 
And I mean, his encouragement was, if you don't get through one verse, that that's okay. I mean, we're, we're going to move through this very intentionally and very slowly. Um, it can be the whole verse. It can be a couple of words. It can be one word within that verse that we're going to do this exercise uh, with. And so I found it very cool, especially when you started to try to let this text read through you. And again, I'll explain a little bit more of this on the Wednesdays when we gather at 430 a little bit more. And we'll construct my own little, you know, Pastor Joe's Lectio Divina, <laughs> so to speak. And, and we'll work through that kind of thing. But I, I do think it's um, uh, it, the experience was very beneficial for me. I know that I've expressed that with other people. Uh, so maybe this will work for you. And we'll just uh, keep working through this. And then I'm going to focus in on 1 John um, 2. So let's uh, read the first uh, chapter into verse 2.2, because this is going to be um, our gospel, or not our gospel reading, but our, our epistle reading for this particular Sunday. And so, as I said, again, the uh, lectionary um, is really designed this uh, for um, the third year uh, that we're in uh, lectionary B, what we're in right now. So um, here we go. So here's the reading. Uh, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our own hands, Concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaimed also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin... We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. All right, so again, I mentioned that this is uh, this is part of our lectionary reading this, this uh, Easter. Um, and again, it, this is more of a sermon than it is a letter than what you'd find oftentimes in some of the letters or epistles in the New Testament. Uh, and it's definitely meant to be encouraging. And boy, you think about the timing of us coming out of um, out, out of this pandemic. Uh, I think it's spot on for the church, um, even St. Stephen, although I, I don't know that we're struggling as much as some are. But for sure, uh, there's a lot of tension out there. And this encouragement by by John that we're focusing in on love, that we're focusing in on Jesus and walking not in darkness, but rather in light. Um, is it speaks volumes to us today. So again, there's a lot we can pull out of this too, I think, um, because it's just, it's, it's really sad as we look at throughout, you know, our churches um, in our church denomination and across the, the plains, you know, I mean, everywhere you go, this is, this, these churches are experiencing these types of things. Uh, you read about it all over the place. And really somehow Satan has successfully pushed the unrest of the world uh, the political tension, the social tension, the racial tension, uh, the pandemic tensions, you know, masks, no masks, vaccines, no vaccines. But anyway, Satan has successfully pushed all of this unrest right into the body of Christ, right into Jesus' church. And this is uh, a sad thing, a sad thing for sure. And again, we won't cover this section in John, so I'm going to read it to you now, right now, and it's in chapter 2, verses 9. It says, whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. 
But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. All right. So again, um, as I think back through this uh, discipleshiping journey that we've started, you know, through this pandemic and, and worked on, uh, one of the primary goals of the discipleship journey is you is you actually begin to disciple somebody else to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is to form these, you, you know, fellowship groups or these life groups. Um, and in these life groups, one of the things that you're asked to do is, is to practice being the church with one another. Um, and practicing being the church means loving one another. Um, I believe that this is exactly what First John is getting after. Um, and we do know that this is one of the marks of the church, right? I mean, John writes that uh, they will know uh, that we are Christians by our love, and that's how they will tell us uh, for sure. So again, you know, you can focus on any time you want with or with any section of the scripture that you want. Um, I'm inviting you to, to again, meditate on 1 John uh, chapter 1 through verse or through chapter two, verse two, um, that you you think about these things and that way uh, you've already experienced a little bit of this reading and maybe uh, self-devotion through this particular text uh, to be ready for church on Sunday because this is what the message will be on and then also the Bible class too. Uh, but I leave you with the verse that I'm gonna focus specifically on and do this Lectio Divina uh, in my own Pastor Joe way. Um, it's verse seven. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all our sins. All right. So looking forward to being with you Sunday as we dive into first John. Um, and again, just uh, this this uh, sermon series, I'm a little bit excited about uh, uh, what we're going to do with this in the sense uh, that we're going to look at, you know, what John is trying to accomplish here in this little epistle that that God is light, God is love, and God is life. And uh, those will be our, our focuses on uh, for uh, this, this particular Easter season. So again, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, we uh, walk in so much darkness in this world. And so we pray that you would just continue to shine the light of Christ in and through us and in this world. We ask this for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. All right, guys, we will see you soon. Um, and take care. Have a great rest of your afternoon.